Cool. Hey, everybody. Wendy Clinky with Blue Cat Studio. It is, what is it, day 18? Because it's December 18th. Yes, of the Advent Ornament Challenge. We're going to paint this adorable little penguin guy. So colors you need. You're going to need some kind of a crystal-y glitter paint. Ooh, ah. This is just from the Dollar Tree, and it's a great substitute if you don't have the other stuff. I mean, look at that shimmer. We're going for the AB. Okay, enough babble on that. You're going to need a neon pink, a daffodil yellow, some kind of a dark teal. This is mermaid tail, my absolute favorite black and white. And then the two brushes you'll need will be a, uh, a small, what is this? Uh, like a flat brush and a fine liner. All right, let's get these guys out of the way. We'll squeeze a little paint on just one of each, a blop of each color. All right, I'm going to go with a big tub of yellow instead of a little tub of yellow because, you know, it's easier that way. And since these are meant to be fairly quick, we're just going to plop all the paint onto the palette now. So today's going to be a lot of mixing. So we'll put this guy aside over here, kind of on camera, kind of not. And let's go ahead and start drawing. So to do this guy, we're going to begin with a, we're going to think about kind of, this is our center line. You maybe want to sketch and maybe a quarter of the way down or a quarter from the bottom. There we go. A quarter from the bottom. Now let's make it a third, a third from the bottom, whatever, somewhere around there. You're going to make a horizon line. Okay. And then right here where the, um, we're going to kind of create like a little, a little foothold. Then we'll draw a circle for his head. So very worst circle I've ever drawn. And we'll come around and create kind of an oval that connects. Yeah. This guy wasn't in the right place. Oh, you guys having a day. So if you're joining me, say hi. So I know you're there. It is always way more fun to chat with you um, live than it is to just paint all by myself. So, hey, come say hi. And then while we're here, we're going to draw like a little um, a little neckerchief and then like a few little bits that's just sort of fly off like so. And then here with Mr. Penguin, we're going to kind of draw a line and a line and then maybe some little flippers, wings, whatever those things are. These are non... non um, Non-flying birds. I don't know if this is an emperor penguin. I don't know what makes him. Okay, so now on his face, I'm going to kind of pick a point and create like like almost like a little circle here. And then you're going to kind of create a framing of the face, almost like a Batman mask. And then from here, you're going to create the line to create his little the rim of his hat. And we're going to keep it shallow because it's a little poofy hat. And then I guess... I got all off, so we'll do a little ball over here. His hat's going to be slightly slightly sideways. And then some little black dots for his eyes, a little upside-down teardrop for his nose. And I promise he's going to look less like an owl and more like a um, more like a penguin in just a minute. But we've got the basics in. So let's begin with the white for his belly. But of course, if you've painted with me at all before, you know that white is never white. So starting here, I'm going to get, grab a big chunk of white paint and move it into the center for mixing. And then the tiniest little kiss of teal on my brush. Can you see how I have just that little tiny itty bitty smidge of teal on it? I'm going to mix it in with that white to create a light, a light blue. Now that's still pretty dark for a white. It's going to be our base coat. We're going to get that kind of around, kind of around his belly. We'll get a little bit of that around his face as well. And we're always building layers and we're always building base coats. So if you've painted with me before, you know this. If you're new to me, welcome to the fun. Trust the process. I tell you, trust the process. I will get you there. I'll get you to something cute. So I'm less worried about how perfect it is in the middle. Let's see. So where do I get that cool snowman white paper? Um... Oh, maybe you want to clarify that question. I'm not quite sure. This is just a piece of printer paper that I, I, I painted on. All right, so now we're going to get a little bit more white now that we've got that basic blue in there. And we are going to add some of the white to begin to lighten that. But we want those little bits of light blue to kind of peek through and tone. Because, you know, when you're doing drawing something that's kind of from the Arctic, everything's pretty much white. So we have to find ways of tweaking 
tweaking the white so the eye can see it and kind of stylizing everything. So when you're focusing the white, you want it to be more focused in the center. Oh, the paper under my drawing. This is just a, this stuff, this is just wrapping paper that I bought like four or five years ago, I think. I don't even know. Or maybe, gosh, I really don't even know. It's definitely pre-pandemic. And I figured I would, because I, I love to like cover my, my kitchen table with wrapping paper. Because at the time I had little kids who were a hot mess. And I was like, oh, we can wrap the, the paper in this Christmas wrap. And the kids can color it in. The kids never, ever colored it in. But it doesn't matter. It's still fun. And so, I don't know, it's, it's whimsical. Makes me happy. So to this day... I don't do tablecloths. I do wrapping paper to cover <laughs> to cover my tables. So now that we've got that basic kind of pale blue white color in there, I'm going to offload my paint. Now, again, if this is your first time joining me, I have. Let me show you this thing. It's it's a mess. Oh, it's a it's a stock prospectus from who was it again? Dupont, and I've just painted on it and painted on it, and there's like pages and pages. I rescued it from the recycle bin and I just kind of pick a page and offload my excess paint and then I rinse. And what I find is that it just helps kind of keep things, it keeps my paint water less gross. Um, and it just kind of makes things easier. Sometimes I just offload for the sake of, well, for the sake of offloading and, you know, resetting my brush. Okay. So instead of doing the black, I'm going to start with the background here because black covers everything. So we may as well do sort of the the two backgrounds. So to start at the bottom, we're going to grab a chunk of the hot pink. We're going to pull it over here. Then we're going to big grab right off the edge, a big old chunk of white. Now you see, I kind of ended up dragging hot pink through my white. So there we go. So I've got a nice light pink there. I'm gonna rotate this guy and we'll go like so. Because I know the black is going to cover this guy completely, oof, I think I've been erasing. I'm not stressed about it. I'll just go right over it and the black will fully cover. All right, so I'm going to get a little bit more of the hot pink and make it a little bit brighter right across that horizon line. And then we're going to do on surface blending. So I'm going to just kind of take that and bring it down, bring it down, bring it down. You see how we do that? Just kind of brush across, brush across, brush across. And it starts to fade. And then we'll bring some of that lighter pink that we just mixed up. There we go. Lovely, lovely. And if we want to lighten it just a smidge more for interest, I'm going to grab some white. I haven't rinsed my brush. I haven't offloaded. Just kind of grabbing paint. Just kind of dragging little bits in. Now, I've got a lot of paint built up. I don't know if you can see that right there along the ferrule of the... Of the um, of the brush. So I'm going to offload that. So I just have less gooping, goopage going on. Oh, and Christy comes on. She says, I love your fun color for art. Thank you, Christy. I have seen your post likes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And hopefully you're getting a chance to paint some of these as well. Okay. So the idea here is that this is kind of a, just a mixed, a mixed surface. Now I feel like I've got like a bit of a, bit of a divider line here. So grabbing a little bit more of the hot pink and just kind of blending it in. And I'm keeping a majority of the, the brush strokes side to side here, side to side, side to side. And it's okay if you get a few hot pink spots. Hot pink is definitely one of my most favorite colors. Like really just, I was a little bit crazy about it. That's all I got to say. So now I'm going to offload my brush, get rid of all the excess. And that just kind of keeps my brush workable. I could rinse it, but you know what? I might be slightly lazy at heart. All right, let's mix some new fun colors. We're gonna grab a big old hunk of yellow. And since we've already got that light pink pre-mixed, I'm just gonna grab, add that yellow to the, to the pink mix. And I added too much yellow, so that's fine. We're gonna add a little bit more of the pink. Mix, mix, mix. Mix, mix, mix. It's a pretty hot orange, but it's got a touch of white in it. So we'll begin there with this kind of hot orange, kind of in this zone. We're kind of doing like the dusk. I don't know if it's sunrise or sunset or kind of perpetual noonday sun in the Arctic. Of course, that's a summer thing, not a winter thing, isn't it? Let's 
getting kind of orange as we go up. And I'm gonna add a whole bunch of white, just grabbing white straight from the brush. I'm gonna begin right in the middle of, of that existing orange and then work my way up and around the hat. So as you can see, I've kind of taped the ornament down. I find that just keeps things a little bit easier. So again, starting kind of right here in the in the mid zone and bringing, bringing it up and then dragging to blend on down. So now we've got kind of a warm, golden, hazy, whoops, got a little bit more in there, orangey pink. And then, oops, I'm sorry, I totally kicked this thing. I don't want it to be bumping all over the place. I'll grab a little bit of more pink right here, a little bit of that orange right here. We wanna just kind of orangeify, slightly orangeify my pink. I still want it to be fairly pink. And we're gonna take that and we're gonna build just kind of like a fun, background. Now I feel like I got a little too much white in there. So think of this as like little mountains or maybe it's even like icebergs or something because this is the Arctic, right? Because that's where penguins live. But we don't want it to all be blue even though it probably is all blue. I needed some hot pink. And honestly, I was looking at the whole Advent ornament um, collection. I was like, we need, we need some more things with really bright, like festive background, like happy backgrounds. So. So I'm trying to kind of create like a sense of an orangish line and then some sort of pink highlights. That's pretty orange there. And then the pale, pale like tangerine sky. Okay, so offloading my brush just to kind of get rid of paint. I don't need to, I don't need to rinse it yet. I think I should be good. So now I'm gonna grab another chunk of pink. I've got some right here, pull it over here next to my mermaid tail. I get a tiny kiss of mermaid tail. Probably too much, but we're gonna see what happens. I'm gonna mix it in with my pink. And I was fine, like when I when I mix mermaid tail and hot pink, you get this beautiful, beautiful purple color. Now that's pretty intense and that might be a lot more intense than we're looking for. So I'm gonna take it down a notch, like desaturate it with a little bit of white. So I grab some white, I'm gonna place it here next to the purple, just with the purple that was already on my um, on my brush. And that should be sufficient. Oh, there we go. Sorry, guys. There you can see it. So we'll take that light purpley kind of color and we'll kind of create like a horizon line here. And then we'll do a little bit of a shadowing kind of behind this guy so that he's kind of casting a shadow. And I feel like I could amp that up a little. So I'm just going to grab some of that other purple that we mixed and blend it in just a little bit real gently. So I know you can buy purple in bottles, but I feel like I can just never quite get it right. And I just, mm. can you find the right color combo? Just a big fan of mixing my colors. Okay, so now we have this purple thing, which looks like a weird blob, but in fact, it's kind of a shadow. And once we get um, Mr. Penguin's kind of tuxedo um, drawn on, it'll make a whole lot more sense. It'll look like he's casting a shadow. So go ahead and offload. And then I think rinsing is probably a good idea. And then once you've rinsed your brush, make sure you give it a good dry with a paper towel and squeeze it. And let's make his hat and his thingy, neckerchief. Yeah. Oh, let me give this a quick blast because I've got some hot pink there that's quite wet and that and green are gonna make a terrible combination if I don't. All right, so placing my dryer just kind of right here to blow. Uh, yeah, it's a really, so this is actually not a dryer, it's a, it's a heat gun. And so it dries things pretty quickly as long as it's a fairly thin coat. If you go with a really heavy duty coat, then um, it tends to bubble things a little. All right, let's make a green. So the way we make a green is we grab a hunk of yellow over here. And a little kiss of the mermaid tail teal. And we'll just kind of see what we get. Oh, and that's beautiful. It's like a very springy, happy green. So if you're like really not into mixing or you don't have mermaid tail or some kind of a beautiful teal, you can also always use like a sour apple. Although quite honestly, 
well, all right, they look the same here, but the sour apple, it tends to be slightly bluer than the color I just mixed. And I tend to like my, oh shoot, I just got it in the, in the white paint. Whoops, let me just wipe that off. Okay. And I need to mix a little more because I totally adulterated that with, with white and I didn't want the white in there taking it down a notch. All right, there we go. So I tend to like my greens a little bit warmer. Oh, hi, you're, you're, you're not catching the end. We Shoot, we've been only going for 15 minutes. We have plenty of time. All right, so let's take this green and kind of bring across the middle here. Bloops. So he's warm and cozy and snuggly. I don't know. Let's see. There we go. And then we're just going to kind of do a little, just a little, little there's the, the, the ties of his neckerchief or his scarf. And we'll do his fluffy hat. <laughs> his hat matches my hat today. And then we'll just kind of get it green up along here and we'll tune this a little bit. And then there's like the little ball. And I want to make sure I get all my pencil marks covered because ain't nobody wants to see my pencil marks when we're done. You just want to see the paint. So I'm also hoping that, you know, each day that we do these designs, that that the the, the freehand instructions kind of make sense. I mean, I've, I've seen a couple of you guys do these things and you've really pulled off the freehanding beautifully. So I haven't gotten any feedback that you guys are desperate for tracers. I haven't created any. Um, and I'm hoping that you're like, yeah, no, that's, that's, it's clear. We got it. We're, we're, we're good. At least that's my dream. So definitely feedback is always helpful. Let's see. Technology isn't liking me today, but I found you. Yay. I am so glad you found me. Okay. So now that we've got the green in, notice I still have a green, whatever this is, green on my brush. I'm just kind of come and grab a little bit of the mermaid tail directly. And while I have it here, I'm going to kind of just press it in. See how it's kind of bringing some of the, the the pigment that's already in my brush onto the palette and kind of combining beautifully with that mermaid tail. Mermaid tail is such a crazy versatile color. Sometimes they have it at Michael's, but regularly they have it at, at Hobby Lobby. I would highly, 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 highly recommend getting some. Well, you know, if you like to paint with me, because I use it all the time, like all the time. So now we're going to add a little bit of that dark green, kind of just along the tops of these things. Then we're going to kind of edge his little scarf, get a little at the bottom. This just gives it a little bit more dimension and fun. And then right kind of under his neck. And we'll get a little bit more blendy. And then, of course, right along the hairline or the, the forehead line, that's always important. And then right along here so if we've got the cuff of the hat or the brim of the hat and then we've got the rest of it a little bit more darkness and now that i'm there i'm going to come back into my lighter green that i mixed no rinsing no offloading nothing I'm just kind of bring it back through and kind of scrub scrub that dividing line to make it a little a little bit more blended scrub 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 now I'm feeling that got a little darker than I wanted, so we'll grab some yellow and just kind of mix it. And that's going to retone. And you notice I'm doing the mixing. Oh, and she says, I don't think tracers are necessary. Yeah, I'm kind of thinking tracers aren't necessary either. That's my hope. Um, okay. So I just added some yellow so I could lighten it up, and we'll bring a little bit of that brighter, brighter green back. I kind of lost it as I added some of that mermaid tail. So we'll just kind of add a little bit more towards the middle here. Little reblend. It happens sometimes. Now that I'm here, we'll grab some white and we'll put it right into the middle of that green. And so I'm still working with a with a flat brush. I really love the flat, like these little tiny flat brushes. I feel like I get a really clean line in most cases. Um, all right, so we're gonna do a little kind of lighter green highlight. In fact, I'm just gonna go straight into some white and just drag some pure white kind of right across the top of that because we've still got wet paint. And then we'll do a little bit kind of right in the center zone of this guy. This is a little neck thing, a little bit kind of on parts. Now I'm gonna offload my brush real quick and then come back through and just kind of soften that and soften that 
and soften that and soften a little bit on the underside of this one. Oh, we need to do the poof too. Here we go. Poof, poof, poof. So just grab some of your lighter green and then you can grab some white and just kind of dab, 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 dab. Make it poofy. I feel like we've done a bunch of poofies in this over the, over the last couple of weeks. So you probably kind of have the, have a sense of how to do the poofies. So I'm not, not putting a ton of focus on that. Okay. I think it's now officially time to step down from this brush to a fine liner. So first and foremost, of course, offload that brush so that most of the wet paint pigment is off of it. And then go ahead and give it a good rinse. And then we're gonna grab a liner brush. See how fine that point is? And it's these beautiful, long, slim bristles and there's not many of them. Oh, I forgot, we do. All right, so we're gonna use this guy. There's some bulk in here that will be hard to fill in. We do still need our, our other guy, but we're gonna get that line in first. So I'm gonna grab some black and we're gonna sketch in the penguin body. So remember, you can kind of still see, that you may not be able to see my pencil lines, but I can. And that also means that when you do this and you do pencil lines, you'll be able to see your own pencil lines, even if you can't see mine. So we've kind of filled in the body there. And we'll fill in the body here. Looks like I got a little over exuberant with my purple in a few spots and got some purple on his belly, but no biggie. And then maybe he's gonna have some sort of goofy little, little penguin feet over here. Yep. I love penguins, they're so adorable. And they're so winter too, right? There we go, boom, kind of outlining there. And then we'll kind of remember that little peak. So for this little part up top, I think filling it in with a little tiny brush is probably perfectly okay. But for the other part, it's like we'll be here all day and ain't nobody got time for that, right? All right, so I don't have his little beak in, but I think his little eyes are gonna be like right here and right here. And they can be, you know, kind of closest together. He doesn't have to have really wide eyes. If we do really wide eyes, he's gonna look like an owl. So keep his eyes in kind of close. Let's see, she says, I used to have three plush penguins that came out at Christmas. Oh, and you, but you still have them for your mom. That's cool. Penguins are so cute. We'll fill this in in a second, guys. All right, so I'm going to just get a quick outline on the scarf while I'm here. Rotating, of course, just to make it easier to get to. Yeah, I'm going to have to mix an orange for, for this little guy's beak. So I'm curious how you guys are doing this, this season. We're so close to Christmas and the holidays. All right, so you can kind of see where we're going with this. This comes together pretty quick. It's like 23 minutes. We've almost got a full thing. So I'm going to offload the paint on my little skinny brush here. Now, when you go ahead and rinse, you're going to place it in here, not touch the bottom. You're just going to shake, 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 right? You cannot scrub these tiny brushes at, you know, into your, um, into your paint jar because, where's my, oh, here it is. Because it's just gonna mess with those bristles. And then we just give it a gentle, gentle squeeze to kind of keep it all together. Because you know, when you don't love on your brushes, the, the bristles start to splay and do this. And then you get these weird and yucky split lines and then you get really frustrated and mad and blah, blah, blah. All right. So if you choose to mix with a tiny brush like this, you have to kind of do it in single like strokes. So I'm grabbing some pink and some yellow and I'm just kind of painting in the direction that the brush would appreciate for lack of a better term. 
adding a little bit more yellow because I want that to feel orange. Now, if this orange feels too bright for a um, for a beak, you can always grab the teensiest kiss of mermaid tail teal. And just kind of mix it in in one little spot to bring it down a notch to kind of make it a little less loud. All right, here we go. So we do an upside down teardrop, or you can even start with like, let's start with a circle, kind of right where the nose would be. And then we'll pull down kind of like a triangle shape from there to make a penguin beak. Whoops, my penguin beak. Got a little funky lump in it, so I'm just gonna make mine wider. So I don't remember what a penguin beak looks like, but I figure it's good enough. So there you go, now we have orange. Now if I wanted again to kind of make that a little bit more, I could add a little bit of mermaid tail teal to my orange although I tend to overdo it and then mess it up and whatnot, but a little bit of the mermaid, like, like the tiniest, tiniest hint would darken it up just a smidge and make it a little bit more like say a jack-o'-lantern orange from deco art. So it's nearly fluorescent. Cause you know, that's what happens when you do a super bright yellow with a super bright pink. So offloading that brush before we rinse it, whoops, give it a good shake in the water without the, and it's very noisy but we don't want the bristles to touch the bottom and scrub. And then we're gonna give it a good pinch to get the excess paint off the ferrule. Again, brush care matters, right? Otherwise you'll be buying, buying brushes like all day, every day. Oh, shoot, I forgot to do his toes. All right, well, we're gonna grab some of that orange that I just mixed. And we're just gonna blab it in here. So boop, 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 he's got orange feet. All right, we're good. See, I'm a good BS artist, right? I get so distracted. I'm like, oh, squirrel, we'd love to do this. We'd love to do that. Going in for some black. Everybody centered here? Yeah, okay. Now we're just gonna black in his little, his little tuxedo. Of course, he doesn't really need a tie because he's got a neckerchief. I'm just going with a bigger brush because we would be here all day trying to fill this guy in with a skinny brush. like all day and you notice how because we already did that purple there and then we did the feet he looks like he's casting a shadow kind of where he's standing that was the idea offloading that brush so we're now we are again done with a big guy give it a good rinse and a dry i think i want to make his belly a little bit whiter so since i dried that I can use it, but first I'm gonna I'm gonna tune his little toesies a little bit here, just a little, just a little, 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 because that orange is almost the exact same value, same lightness, darkness as the pink, so you can't really see it unless you do the outline. So it's kind of a cheat, but you know what? It's a whimsical design, and whimsical you can get away with cheating. In realism, yeah, you can't cheat so much. Just a little bit more white. So I got a lot of white on my brush. Now I'm going to offload it and just saturate or just kind of fill my bristles so that I have less um, goop like on the surface and a little bit more kind of kind of ingrained in the breast in the bristles. We're going to just lighten his belly a little bit, just lightening it a little bit. So I feel like the blue is just a little bit too blue. There we go. Okay, so if you are interested in color schemes, we've almost, except that I've kind of washed out the blue, we've almost got like kind of an X-shaped set of um, complementary colors. So we've got kind of like the, the, pink and, the pink and green kind of right along this line here. And then we've kind of got the orange and orange and teal like here. So we're kind of doing an X shape of complementary. Oh, sorry, X shape of complementary. If you haven't done a, um, a uh, color wheel yet, it is super helpful and interesting to learn. Um, oh, hey, you know, all right, let's come in here. We're gonna grab a little white dot on this guy. Here's my sample, just gonna see him. We're gonna add a little dot with a white and the 
and the mini thing. And each eye just kind of off to the side like a reflection. And then we're going to add a little, little reflection on his nose. And then, oh my God, I forgot his fins. I knew something was missing. She's Wendy. There we go. Do a little like kind of rounded triangles, little flippers, because these guys are swimmers. All right, yep, there we go. I was like, why doesn't it look like my drawing? <laughs> Something's missing. <laughs> okay, I'm fine, I'm fine, we're all fine. It's good, right? So let's see. And one of my watchers says, Tool, I only thought of complementary colors really when using two, not two sets of so four. Yeah, it's kind of weird. I mean, you could you could call it a whole number of things. Um, but when you look at it, you really do have, you know, the, it's kind of like an X, an X of complementaries. Because it's not like a full cross where they're categorically opposite. All right, there we go. And I've got my white and we will add some, so a couple more highlights. So we got his eyes done. We'll add a few little white bits and ticks to his the poof on his hat and we'll do a couple of like little lines in the rim of the brim of his hat so it looks like it's um kind of scarfy or kind of like stretchy and then if you want you can add some to the neck i'm not sure i want to do that let's see holly says that's me about the complimentary colors and penguins hi holly you gotta click the link that says you know um for stream yard so i can see your name it's so weird. It feels like you, you click it a gajillion times and then sometimes it doesn't work. All right, so I'm going to do a little highlight right here along the tops of his flippers. And by the way, Halls, I'm very glad you joined us and tuned in. And then we'll do a little highlight on his body just to kind of pop him up. And then maybe a little something around his forehead. Boop. Just a couple of cute kisses. Now we're going to give... Now, we could leave it like just the way it is. However, 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 I feel like he really pops off the page even better when we go straight with our little skinny brush into that mermaid tail teal. And we brush just a little bit of that mermaid tail teal right into his, into his tuxedo. So we still want that black to show, but we also want there to be kind of a a bluish tinge to it. And that's where it now starts to really feel kind of like the crossways complementary. And just little kind of streaks of that mermaid tail teal right over the black. But it's kind of right in the center of the black. The black outlines are still showing. Oh my gosh, this guy is so stinking cute. I kind of love him. Let's see. Holly says, I'm telling you, Facebook hates me. It tries to hide, <laughs> tries to hide blue cat from you. Aww. And you even got the verbal heads up that I was going live. Golly. Okay. So on this guy, you'll see like I have two different ones. Um, you could do little stripes on the neck. I kind of regretted it the first time when I was doing my test piece. So I'm just going to kind of leave him as is. And one more thing, offloading. I don't need to rinse because I'm going to go right into some black. I would like to add just a little definition to his beak. So let me get my head way down here. I hope to goodness I could get this right. Meep. And there it is. Ta-da! Nicely done. Oh, you know what? When I look here, I feel like the horizon line is really amorphous. So I'm gonna rinse and we're gonna do a little bit darker purple. We I know I just gave you the ta-da, and I was like, no, it's not done. So pink, brush it off. Teal, brush right into it. I'm trying to keep the strokes mostly in one direction to protect and preserve the beauty of my lovely bristles. Okay, and then we're gonna come through and just brush a little bit more of that purple right along the horizon line. Just directly under the orange. If you put the, this purple color on the orange, it's not gonna go well. It's gonna give you a milky brown. If you kind of do it right over the pink, again, it's a subtle horizon line. And then if you want to kind of blend it a little, you could just grab a little pink on the tip and come right over along that edge. There we go. Oops, not much there. So maybe offload a touch before you go into the pink. 
And I'll soften it just a little. Again, we never like anything to be harsh lines unless it's a stark contrasty thing that's purposeful. But when we're trying to blend, oh, there he is. Isn't he cute? I love this guy. All right, so it took us 35 minutes to do an adorable penguin. That's cool. So we'll untape him. And as always, we'll roll this guy up so I can stick him on the thing for later. We need to do the top here in our gold because that's how we did all the others. So must be consistent, right? Using the Extreme Sheen Deco Art Americana 24 karat gold. Always, 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 always because it's like the very best. A little that gold. And filling it in, filling it in. Like sometimes I feel like this gold looks amazing with a design, and sometimes I'm like, meh, it's okay. But again, it doesn't, you know, whatever. But, oh, isn't he cute? Oh my gosh. And he goes so well with the collection. I feel like like him and the flamingo and the cactus could be like best friends. Like, oh, that's a happy collection. So, anyways, that is day 18. I think I'll play catch up on day 12 tomorrow. I was planning on doing it today, but it's kind of an emotional piece for me since um, it was the day we lost one of our blue cat original kitties. Um, so stay tuned. We're going to do kind of like a, a, a furry, a, a fur baby design tomorrow as a catch up piece. And I'll also do a regular uh, project for the 19th. But yeah, I, I watched some reel on Facebook where some guy was like about to get a kitten and then it was like something else. And it was like one of those worst surprises. I was just bawling my eyes out and it like set me back a couple hours. I'm like, I can't go live now. <laughs> All right. So there it is. Advent ornament challenge. Join me every day. And if you want to do this, um, you know, any other day or you want to you want to do some of the other ornaments, you can do them all. You can pick and choose realize doing them every single day is a lot. It's a big commitment. So don't feel obligated to do them all. But if you want to do one, pick your favorite and do your favorite. If you've got 10 minutes, do the snowflake. All right, you guys, I love you. Kisses, hugs, all the things. Happy holidays. And we'll see you tomorrow. Y'all. Yeah.